Hey guys, Joe here. So in this video, hopefully the audio is okay. Uh, so yeah, anyway, in this video, I'm gonna be doing a uh, weekly recap thing I was doing before and then kind of stopped doing. And my goal, honestly, is to just be more consistent with everything I do. So there we go. Anyway, so yeah, today is, I don't even know because my uh, watch stopped working. So it's Friday, mid-August, somewhere in there. Uh, 2024. So a lot has happened in the past two weeks or so. Um, so I did a pretty long video the other day that talked about, um, you know, the issues we're having in work and things like that. If you didn't see it, basically we had an issue where, um, you know, two employees came to me, they were complaining about the situation and I didn't really know the problem. The reason why I didn't know is because I wasn't as involved as I should have been. And so, um, you know, I basically said to him, you know, let me figure out this, uh, figure out what we're going to do and we're going to have a meeting tomorrow morning. So because they came to me at like two, three o'clock on a Thursday, we had that meeting on Friday. And so I'm basically going through our, you know, why we're having the meeting, our core values, where we're heading as a company and the current issues we're dealing with and how I'm looking to solve them. Right. And so we get to the end of the meeting and then we're just kind of like open discussion and then basically you know someone's talking about um you know for the one individual that you know is now the you know the manager in the back and you know started you know complaining like hey he should be doing this he should be doing that and things like that and i'm like to be honest with you the the whole reason why we're having all these problems is like it's my fault like you know he was promoted he's a young kid uh, you know, no experience whatsoever in management and I let him just, you know, do his thing and Honestly, like he made sure the whole back worked, right? I really was never needed and you know, I could count on that he was gonna Just make it work and if there was a major issue we couldn't figure out He would, you know, come and get me. The nice part is he's the type of in individual that he will actually try and think about what to um you know how to fix the situation so which I, I like it's awesome like I haven't like he's probably the first person to be honest with you so if you don't have someone on your team that is actually thinks um, you don't you can't even comprehend like it's pretty crazy so and uh, so anyway they end up blowing up like um, you know as I'm saying that they're blowing up and they're like you're lazy and blah 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 and all this other kind of stuff and I almost got into a fight so we end up you know separating them and trying to get them to calm down I'm like look go I'll give you money go to McDonald's go calm yourself down you know take an hour like you know don't clock out I'll pay for you just take your time and then you know come back we'll discuss it and I'm like no we're done you know whatever so at that point they leave and we're like all right we'll see you Monday and I'm like yeah we'll see and so that happens monday comes around they never showed up never heard from them until like at night and then i guess they were working at somewhere else i don't think they personally liked it so that was two people that you know end up leaving because it was a boyfriend girlfriend situation and i don't think they really liked it and then then they reached back out and said hey can we you know work at this other warehouse instead which we really don't have full-time work um I was waiting to talk to my, you know, former supervisor when she came in on Wednesday, and by then um, they had deleted that message, so we just, you know, separated ways. Because this wasn't the first time, like, there were problems before, um, you know, where someone that turned down the radio and then they almost went to go and try to fight them. Now, this is last year, but you can't have something like that on the team, and then we're finding out that there was other things being said that we didn't know about that we just found out about. So anyway, so that all happened. Uh, so we were down two people, right? And then, so we had to build aluminum. We're having some issues with that. I found out some other stuff that I really didn't want to. Uh, it's like a business owner, like we really don't want to know, like, but we kind of have to, that kind of thing. Uh, so there's even more issues. So I actually spent a little bit of time today readjusting cameras at the other warehouse as well as adding an additional one because we're finding out some other issues um, as far as productivity level and things like that. And I'm not the type that watches the cameras because if I have to watch the camera, then I don't want you on the team, 
Like it's that simple. Like if I have to babysit you, like you're working for the wrong person because I am not a babysitter, right? So like the writing's kind of on the wall at this point of like what's gonna happen with some other people. And you know, I, I said to a few people there, I said, you know, to be honest with you, the people that are, you know, have the core values and really have the best interest for the company and things like that, you know, you guys are going to love what's gonna start to happen, right? Whereas the people that aren't the good fit, they're gonna hate me, right? Um, because it's like, I try to be as nice as I possibly can, and then like, I just feel like I get taken advantage of over and over and over again. And it just gets to the point where you wanna say, like, fuck it, like, I'm not gonna be nice, I'm not gonna do things that, uh, you know, other owners would do and things like that. And like, we started that with the food. So if you don't know, for my fence supply company, you know, we actually do uh, contractor and crew appreciation every single Friday. So typically we have breakfast and lunch. Uh, today we actually did Chick-fil-A. I ended up not picking up breakfast. Um, and, but normally breakfast, lunch, that kind of thing. But we do it every single Friday. And like we spend like at least probably 200 bucks a week, anywhere from like, honestly, it's probably usually more than 200, but we probably spend like 250, three, 350. Um, there's been weeks we spent four and 500 bucks a week on food for our crew and for our contractors and honestly no one does that and on top of that no one of our size would do that right because like we're still not a big company that like, obviously we're going to do you know several million dollars um this year like not two million like way more than that and it's like yeah it's our second full year but like we constantly are reinvesting into the company you know, we honestly had too many people that were working during the, the peak season, like way too many, like we're probably like five people overstaffed. We did let a lot of people go. There were several people that um, they just needed to go, to be honest with you. They just didn't fit in, you know, because I didn't do what we normally, like we were doing, which was, you know, before I hire anyone, I go through the core values, specifically the core values. Like for the most part, any job within our company, like it's easy to learn. Now the front counter, that is a very difficult position to learn because it's, you know, customer service. You're dealing with people face to face, over the phone, text message, email, things like that. You're dealing with quoting and like, there's a lot of attention to detail. Like it's, it's very critical. Whereas the rest of the positions, and that's where we hired most of the people for, like we can train you how to do something in pretty much like half a day. Like it's really not that hard. As long as you have the core values, you'll be fine, you know, and even if we find out that like we hire you for one position and see either you don't like it or we see that you're going to be a better fit somewhere else. As long as you have those core values, we can place you pretty much anywhere within the company. Right. And and I drill down them like honestly, if it's an interview and takes 45 minutes, a half hour or 20 minutes to a half hour is spent on core values and nothing else. And I go line by line by line. And, you know, after that, I can't, you know, when they go home, I, I think they're going to be a good, you know, candidate. I tell them to go home, go over the core values. I have them do this mirror test. Um, the mirror test sounds crazy. I've probably talked about it before. Um, I end up finding out about it and reading about it in a uh, wealth abundance book. I can post that. It's a little pamphlet. And it was honestly, you tried it, you do it. You know, if you don't have money, like we're trying to find if you if you don't ever have money, if you always find like that, you uh, like it doesn't even have to be just about money, but just life in general. If you find that nine, you know, nine times out of ten, if everything's going well and then like you just somehow you always find a way to screw it up, there's chances are it's probably something with your mindset, right? And so what you need to do is find out why that's happening. And a lot of times you think it's something recent, but it's like something way back in the childhood. Like it's crazy. So anyway, uh, so the mirror test is like if they're currently working at a job, right? It's like, hey, I'm gonna, you know, it's basically you stand in front of a mirror with a pen and a paper and without being distracted and no nobody there, like, and you need some time, right? Could take a half hour. And you just basically say to yourself, you know, I am quitting, you know, whatever job I'm currently working at and I am going to be working at H&J, right? And then, so when the person says that, and if you say for whatever it may be, like in my case, I used to say, like through this abundance book, it was like, I deserve to be wealthy, right? And as soon as I said that, 
then it would do, uh, then my brain and your brain's gonna do the same thing, where it's like, yeah, but. Because our brain, you know, is because of the, uh, like, evolution and everything else, we are trained, you know, caveman days and shit like that, is we are always looking for the problems, right? We're looking for the issues, we're looking for the dangers, we're looking for things that are gonna kill us and, you know, cause us harm and things like that. Like, that's just what we're bred to do, right? And so I, you know, when you go through that, it's like, well, you know, in my case, I would be like, well, I don't know enough or whatever. And so I'd write that down and then I basically would work through it. And it's like, is that really true? Because a lot of times, like, like my wife, like her family would tell her all kinds of crazy shit. And I'm like, like, even still at, at 40 years old, like some of the things that she holds on to, you know, will talk. And I'm like, what are you talking? Like, where did you hear this from? It's like, well, my dad told me this. I'm like, it's not true, right? And you're basing, you know, a lot of your decisions and how your actions on what's your family said or what you picked up and what you learned along the way. And a lot of times it's just not true, right? Could be like you tried something a few times, it didn't work out, so therefore you think you may be an idiot, right? And then because you think you're an idiot, every time you go to try and do something, you know, not intentionally thinking you're an idiot, but you're like not, um, you will intentionally not do it because you basically don't want to prove to yourself that you are an idiot, right? Um, the other way is like the one question I ask people and like I would highly suggest asking this question to people because you will find out, like you'll know, um, it's a, actually a really good indicator if they are gonna be a good employer or not, right? For the long term. And I ask people, how do they feel about money, right? A lot of people like, you know, if they say the money is the root of all evil, do not hire them. Why? Because no matter what's gonna happen is if that's how they feel, they will intentionally, I mean unintentionally, fuck things up. They will. Because what's gonna happen is unless they are, and I tell people, like unless you're a sociopath, your brain is not gonna allow you to like, if you're so upset to the point where like you want to like literally kill someone, you're not going to do it. Like your brain is just not going to let you do it because you're not a sociopath. You're not a murderer, right? It could be like height, no matter what happens. Like, you know, if I go on the ladder at a certain point, because I'm scared of heights or I keep on telling myself, I start shaking, like everything, you get just feel it in your body and I just will not go up any higher, right? Because my body won't let me because it associates with heights with being like danger and I don't want to die. So therefore, or my, you know, my body doesn't want to die. So therefore that happens. So anyway, we have them do this mirror test. Anyway, I got home, so I kind of rambled more and more. So anyway, there's a lot of issues happening. Um, that being said, I feel like, oh, I never got an air hockey table. That being said, our company, because of what happened, is in a much better place than it was ever, right? We're seeing such a huge change. There was two people I would always complain about. Um, they weren't, in my opinion, they didn't, um, they weren't hustling enough. They weren't taking enough initiative and things like that. And the worst, and the reason why I didn't talk to them directly is honestly, they just speak Spanish. And that's been a huge roadblock and I was letting that get in the way of what I should have been communicating with them. Plus I was working on other stuff and I should have been more involved when I wasn't. And so anyway, I've seen such a huge change. Like today alone, we were down technically five people at the warehouse because we were down to two people. We had one person going to deliver um, a last minute order. Then two other people were at the other warehouse building aluminum. We had a container come in so we had five less people at the warehouse. Now it was slower because it's Fridays, which are usually slow in general. Plus it's the last two weeks of summer, which is always really slow because people go on vacation, stuff like that. But there is one less person on the container than there normally was because we didn't have enough people. And they got it done just as fast, if not faster, than they normally do. It's pretty crazy. So anyway, all in all, like we had a pretty shitty week, but also it was pretty damn amazing as well. So, um, Trying to think what else happened. That was it. Um, I still feel unfocused as anything. Like that is driving me freaking insane. 
And I think what's happening is I'm not following what I should have been, which is like, what's that one thing I should be doing that I'm not doing, right? And honestly, it comes down to like, what's the one thing I need to focus on? And I was just thinking about this as we're watching the YouTube video. It's like, if that one thing is whatever, um, just say improving our sales process, right? If that is your one thing and if that's my one thing, I should not be doing, thinking about, reading about, consuming, whether it's reading or listening or watching content that is not related to improving the sales process. If it is anything else, it's a waste of time because if I spent, and the other thing is like, um, there's a quote that I just, um, we read, or I put on the TV is that, um, it was more or less like, we're not playing checkers. Like this is chess, right? And it's more the, the time that you spend on the, um, what you're going to do sometimes needs to, it wasn't in a quote, obviously, but the amount of time that we're spending on the, what we are going to do during our work hours, more than likely we need to, like, I know for me, like I need to increase that, like, Number one is I need to plan it out. Number two is like, just say I would have planned like what I'm gonna do uh, tomorrow and I took five minutes, right? Chances are I should probably spend about 45 to 50 minutes, like 10 times longer. Because if I spent 10 times longer and really nailed down exactly what I should have done or what I should be doing, as soon as I hit the ground running, I would actually get it done. Instead, I get into work and it's like, I'm well, one, I'm getting you know interrupted but I don't have a clear plan of what I'm doing. So it's like, I'm trying to figure out what the hell I'm gonna do. Then I'm getting you know, interrupted. So then I have to get back to what I was doing, which was figuring out what I was doing, which I just feel like I'm going around and around and around and around. Instead, I like, I wanna go from here to here. And like, I don't expect to go like this. I expect to go like this and get to my thing, but I'm going like this. Like what should have been like a mile walk has now been a freaking like hike of 20 miles and I'm lost in the woods. That's what I feel like. So anyway, um, that's what I got. So anyway, hope you guys have an awesome weekend. I'm um, going down the shore and then next weekend, my son's Rubik's Cube and actually I'm in that competition as well, which I have not practiced at all. Uh, so that was horrible. So I got to figure out that again. And uh, yeah, so, but that's it. Oh, and of course, if you are in the South Jersey, Central Jersey, basically in the Philadelphia region, and you need a vent supplier, we probably, well, we may be a good fit. If you're this super big company and you want the, like literally the same pricing that we get, we're not a good fit for you. Um, if you want terms, we are not a good fit for you. I will get into that story on another day because that's a topic that I want to talk about. But um, when you're dealing with terms, especially for smaller contractors, it's a horrible choice in my opinion. Uh, because especially when you're first starting out, you are um, not really good with money. You're not good with projecting budgets and everything else. And like this time of year, like you probably think you have more money than what you do. So the economy sucks. So you probably have less money than you wish you had, right? So what happens is really the quickest uh, that I can possibly do is basically spring and summer. Spring, you have all this money because if you're collecting the deposits, you have all this money coming in to your bank account. So if you're used to having like $1,000, now you got like 50 grand. Right? You're like, oh my God, I'm rich. I'm like, I'm a genius, right? Well, you haven't paid off for all the materials, right? And so what ends up happening is the, you know, the summertime, it starts leveling off. The fall, it starts trickling down and then the winter just crashes, right? Well, the part that sucks is that you, like when you're busy during the peak season, you have 30 day terms. So then you have, you spend your money on stupid shit or you're lowering your pricing and not really realizing that you're not making any money and all this other kind of shit. And then when that money's due, you don't have enough money. So then what happens, and we actually had this call today, and I said, Maria, actually I told my uh, Maria like last week, cause we see some people ordering that don't really order from us anymore um, because my other supplier went after them. And the reason for it, they didn't say it of course, is that they, and I apologize if you're one of those people watching this, but it is what it is. Um, they don't have any money. So what happened is they got terms from their other supplier. They can't afford to pay their supplier off. So now they're not ordering because a lot of times the supplier is like, yo, you got to give me money. Uh, some of them will just cut them off completely. Other ones, what we've heard people do is like, just say you owe, like 
just say you owe them money, like you have 20 grand that you owe them, what ends up happening is they would say, okay, if your bill is $3,000 for this order, you need to pay me 3,500 so that way, or uh, some of them do up to 50%. So if the, the bill is $3,000, they want you to pay $4,500 so that 1,500 goes to your balance and then you can still get your material. Problem is they don't have any money, right? Um, or they just cut them off completely. So what do they do? They go to the next supplier. And the, if you are a supplier, and well, if you're a supplier, you already know this deal. And But also if you are a contractor and you're going to a new supplier and you're immediately, especially as a smaller contractor, um, that is con like this person was bigger, is if you're immediately asking about terms as a um, someone that, and you haven't even done relation, like you haven't ordered for, and from them or you stopped ordering a while ago or you never order or you put in one order like every two weeks, if you're asking for terms, we already know that you don't have money and we're gonna say no. Or, well, and we also can, I will not say yes. And um, I'll talk about that another day. Uh, long story short, like the guy killed himself. So I will tell that full story if I haven't told it before. And so anyway, you got that. Um, I will be trying to post more content. Um, and the other thing I'm gonna do is start going back through my past videos and a uh, concept that I've been uh, talked about before, like a numerous, uh, like a lot of times or just one off or whatever. And the one thing I wanna do is start really distilling that information and actually write the, the content first and really drive down like at this point when I do videos, like if they're 10 minutes long, realistic, I could probably communicate that information in about 90 seconds. Well, that's what I'm gonna do with the writing. So I'm gonna basically write everything down first and then I'm gonna keep on distilling it as much as I possibly can, simplify it as much as I can, and like ideally take a concept that is like a two minute long concept and put it into three pictures to kind of convey that information. So that's what I'm looking to do. Um, so I'm just trying to provide the most amount of value that I can as quickly as I can. Um, and if you're interested, I do an email list as well. If you're interested in doing that, uh, reply to this video and then I will put you in there. Um, so yeah, anyway, have a great day. Talk to you soon.